Hey everybody, Mr. Kelly here, and I want to walk you through activity 1.1 from module 1, topic 1, lesson 1 in our Carnegie Algebra curriculum. So in this assignment, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at several what are called scenarios. Uh, and so I will just read problem 1 for you here. It says, read each scenario, determine the independent and dependent quantities, then match each scenario to its corresponding graph. Glue the graph next to the scenario. For each graph, label the x and y axis with the appropriate quantity and a reasonable scale, and then interpret the meaning of the origin. So as you can see, there's quite a lot going on there. So when we talk about a scenario, here's what we mean. These headings right here, so this one here where it says Daredevil, that's one of the scenarios. And then the next scenario is called something's fishy. So everything here represents a scenario and so on and so forth. And you will see that there are several of these that we're dealing with. So let's look at the first one together and we'll walk through what all these instructions mean for us. So read it first, always when there are words, read them no matter what. So our first scenario says daredevil. Grayson completes a dive from a cliff 75 feet above a river. It takes him only 1.5 seconds to hit the water, and then another 0.5 seconds to defend ten, or descend 10 feet into the river. So what's happening here is this guy is literally jumping off a cliff into a river, and we know how long it takes him to fall and hit the water, and then we also know that he goes under the water afterwards. So in our instructions, we're told to determine the independent and dependent quantities first, so you'll see there's a spot there for you to write uh, the independent and dependent quantities. And so what we'll do is we'll just take a look at that. And so uh, if we're looking at our independent and dependent quantities, we want to ask what are the two things we're measuring with numbers. And if we look at this, we can see we're measuring how high above the river he is and how long it takes him to hit the water. So what we have to do is determine which one is dependent on the other. So in this case, his height above the river depends on how long he's been falling. So we would say that the height is the dependent quantity. Now let me ready my pen here. And so our dependent quantity would be the height. And the independent quantity would be the time. And we know from talking about this that very, very often if you see time, it will be the independent quantity, not always, but very, very often. So another thing that's kind of important to think about is we have the time and how are we measuring it? Well, we're measuring it in seconds and we have the height and we're measuring that in feet. You don't have to include this on here, but I always want you thinking about that. All right, so now we've identified our independent quantity and our dependent quantity. The next thing is to match the scenario to its corresponding graph. And so here's what we mean by this. I'm going to erase this so that it doesn't follow us. But if you look at the back of the lesson, and what I have here is exactly what you'll see in your book. But if you look at the back of the lesson, all the way at the end after talk the talk you'll see this thing called graph cutouts and one of these graphs matches that description from our daredevil scenario and we have to figure out which graph matches with that scenario and so in this case it's graph e we can if you think about this a little bit uh, the y-axis would be his height off the ground that's our dependent variable the x-axis would be time and so we'd see that as time goes on, his height above the river gets closer and closer to zero. And then after a certain time, he's actually underneath the water. And so his height would go negative. So graph E is going to be our daredevil scenario. And you can just write it on there. Uh, you can write it more neatly than I can because I'm trying to write on a computer and that is turns out very difficult so I apologize if that's hard to read um, but while you are here we have to follow all those other instructions so we need to label both axes 
So this would be height. And this would be time. And when we label that, we definitely want to include units. So that's in seconds and that's in feet. We also need to include a scale. Um, so notice that we are given numbers. We know that this is about 75 feet because he fell 75 feet to the river. And so what we have to do is we have to determine an appropriate scale. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is starting between the seventh and eighth block. So if each one of these is worth 10, 10, 20, 30, that would put this at about 75 feet. And then we also need to make the same determination uh, for how long or what each block represents on the time axis, on the x-axis. Uh, and so we can see that it took him to go 10 feet under the water, uh, took about half a second, and we can see that that is about two blocks of time, which means that each one of these would be about 0 0.25 seconds. And probably a, an easier way to label that uh, would be to say that every four of these blocks of time is one second. So there would be one second, and then there would be two seconds. And notice that matches up with what we're given in our description. So we have to do that, and we also have to identify what the origin means. So at the origin, we know he is zero feet above the ground, and zero time has passed. And notice we're defining those based off of what these axes mean. So there you go. You're going to do that for each scenario, and there's a whole bunch of stuff to do. Don't leave any of it out. It's all very, very important. This will be stuff that comes back to us over and over again over the course of the year. Uh, and so this is very, very important that we get a good foundation in this now. Uh, not to mention, just looking ahead academically, a significant portion of the ACT is simply reading graphs like this. Uh, so this is a skill that can be very helpful going forward. All right, I hope this was helpful. And let your teacher know anything that is still confusing, they can help you out more.